This morning we continue a journey that we started a couple of weeks ago in the life of our church in stating what we believe, discovering what we believe, proclaiming what we believe, and asking ourselves or telling the world what difference that belief makes in our own lives. So I have a question for you uh, this morning, and that question is borrowed from a, uh, a 2010 commercial that you might remember. It was uh, aired around football season, and it simply asked the question, is it in you? Is it in you? Anybody remember what commercial that was? Gatorade. Gatorade. Don't you wish we could remember like Leviticus as well as we can remember uh, commercials <laughs> like that? Gatorade. Is it in you? I remember the commercial so well because it had Michael Jordan and the likes of our, uh, those uh, celebrity hero sports figures. And they were running down a football field or dribbling down a basketball court. And Gatorade was literally uh, pouring through their pores. You remember that commercial? And, and you could tell what color Gatorade they had uh, had before practice by what was coming out of their pores. So as I thought about, I believe in the Holy Spirit, I kept thinking about, uh, is it in me? Is he in me? When we say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, we really are asking the question or stating, actually stating, that we believe that God lives in us and pours through us. So now that you have that wonderful picture of Jesus pouring through your pores, is it in you? As we walk through the Apostles' Creed, this 4th century uh, work, this gathering of what the Apostles, those that started the church, those that led this uh, proclamation of the gospel from Jerusalem all the way to Rome, the likes of Paul, the likes of Peter, the likes of John Mark, the likes of Barnabas, when we think about this uh, proliferation, if you will, of the gospel. You cannot miss the fact that this is a statement of faith and this is a statement of the Holy Spirit working. The, the very fact that we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, I believe in Jesus Christ, this is a statement, a collection of what the apostles believed. Now, if you've been with us, you know that uh, they did not author this, for they were long gone. But the church needed a way in which to teach the tenets of the faith, a way in which to defend the faith, and a way in which to say, this is what we believe, because this is what we were taught, and this is what we've read in Scripture. And so the Apostles' Creed is, is basically the Apostles' teaching of believing in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so this Sunday, the fifth week in this journey, I believe, what do you believe about the Holy Spirit? We say, and we state in this place, and in many other places all over the world, I believe in the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to say, I believe in the Holy Spirit? And what difference does that make in our own lives, that we believe in the Holy Spirit? To this point, we've affirmed faith in God the Father, God the Creator, God the Son, We've affirmed what it means to believe in the fullness of Christ, that he was born of a virgin, that he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He did uh, descend to the death and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence, last week, he, come, he shall come to judge the quick, the living, and the dead. And we're to this point of saying, what does it mean to say, I have faith? I believe in the Holy Spirit. It really is, for me and you this morning, the way in which we're able to have faith, the Holy Spirit. It's like those things in our lives that are there and they've always been there, and so we give them little credit. We also are always or seem to always forget even that they're present. It's like the air that we breathe. Who walks around saying, I'm so glad we have air today? It's like the light fixture that we cut on every morning not thinking about the different ways in which we generate power here in Minden, not thinking about the different people who had to work all night so that we could have power. Kind of sounds like they're all making power, doesn't it? But anyway, uh, if we're not careful, we forget in the power of the Holy Spirit, but it's the very way in which we're able to have faith. It's the very Spirit that gives us the tenacity. 
the ability to believe and for it to make a difference in our life. Justo Gonzalez is a great theologian and, and really a church history buff. In his book, uh, The Apostles' Creed for Today, he says it best by saying this, it would be a very sad state for Christians were we limited to what we have said in this creed only to this point. Let me flesh that out for you. He said, again, it would be a very sad state for Christians were we limited to what we have said in the creed only to this point. In other words, if if all we had in our human nature, in our human way, was to believe in God the Father and to believe in God the Son, I'm here to tell you before, and I think Husto was really referring to this, we would be in perilous, perilous way. We would be in a way that could not tenaciously believe because we would not have the Holy Spirit, God in us. To believe in the Holy Spirit not only states that God came near, which is how we refer to Jesus Christ, but it also states that God came near to stay. Amen? That God not only came near through Jesus Christ to live and dwell among us, to show us the way, to die for our sins, but God came near to stay, to take up residence, to live in you and me. And that's a mighty statement. Think about the places that you've visited before. Think about the neighbors and friends that you've visited before. Maybe the vacations that you took that along the way you went and saw Aunt Myrtle and Uncle Jim. And think about how you were so excited to arrive there at their house and then think about how excited you were to leave their house. <laughs> oh, what a difference it is to move in and take up residence. It makes me think about my college roommate. My college roommate, we knew each other in high school. We were from different towns, and we were very excited to, to live together in uh, that West LaVille dormitory on LSU's campus. By the way, the only unair conditioned dorm on campus at the time. What was I thinking? <laughs> I, I think about it reminds me of how uh, we were so excited to live together until we began to live together. And we realized that, that 10 feet from his bed to my bed was just not enough space. And we began to know one another. Needless to say, we did not live together the next year. But God, who is rich in mercy through the power of the Holy Spirit, has chosen to live in you, has chosen to live in me, to take up residence Proclaiming, I believe in the Holy Spirit, proclaims that God wants to live in you and he wants to live in me. And not only does he want to dwell in you and dwell in me, but he wants to make a difference through you and through me. John 14 tells us of this, the promise of the Holy Spirit. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to take out that Bible, or if you have a phone that has a Bible app on it, take that app out and turn to John chapter 14. This passage of scripture, this passage of scripture comes to us as Jesus um, has celebrated the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. Prepar preparations have been made, and the feast, the feast has been has been partaken of. Jesus has already stood up and tied a towel around his waist and took a basin of water and washed the disciples' feet. So we know that in Holy Week, this is Thursday night. We know that he's only hours away from giving his life for us, laying down his life for us. And I think the context for us this morning as we look at I believe in the Holy Spirit is to know that, that the disciples' hearts were heavy. And they would grow more heavy as the night went on and into the morning, Good Friday. Jesus starts this chapter with, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Then we turn to verse 15. Jesus says this, if you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you 
and will be in you. Just to stop there, you need to know that he's speaking with his disciples. And when he looks in their eyes and says, for you know him, it's because they knew Jesus. Because for the last three years of their life, two and a half years of their life, they had followed this teacher. And they had seen miraculous acts of service, of humility, of bravery, of patience. But you know him, Jesus says, for he lives with you and will be in you. Jesus says this statement of hope, I will not leave you orphaned. I will come to you. Before long, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. And then the verse 25. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the counselor of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So is it in you? Is he in you? To proclaim that you believe in the Holy Spirit proclaims that yes, he is in you. And the difference that it makes is all the difference in the world, brothers and sisters. The fact that we have God to live and dwell among us is a game changer. You'll have to forgive me over the next weeks and months. I am a lover of football, and so I am ecstatic. Someone asked me if I was more excited about LSU football or my son Blake, and I just kind of went silent for a second. <laughs> I'm so excited about Blake. But I'm really excited about LSU football, too. But it's a game changer. The Holy Spirit is a game changer. For us to believe in God the Father and believe in Jesus Christ is powerful. It makes a difference in our life because of what has been done and what God is doing. But to state I believe in the Holy Spirit says I believe that God lives in me. Not only for my faith, not only for my spiritual health, not only so that I might know, love, and serve God, but so that others might know, love, and serve God. It's a game changer. It means everything. So the way I see this, I believe in the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, is in the beginning, God creates and we fail. God redeems. We continue to fail. God provides a way for us to never have to be perfect again, but for his perfect love, his perfect will to cover us, Jesus, and we fail again. The holy and perfect gives his life for us. We fail again. I love Peter because he gives me such hope because Peter just fails over and over and over again. And then God promises us that even though we fail, we'll never be alone. I will not leave you as orphaned. And he gives us the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, chapter 1 and 2 tells us of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Something that, that blows my mind is that God's presence has, presence has been with this world since the beginning of time, since he created it. God's presence in the garden, he was fully known by Adam and Eve. Because of the fall of man, Eden was closed altogether. We were cast out into this world, and God's presence was made known through different voices. God's presence was made known, made known in the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies. The Ark of the Covenant was the home of God's presence for centuries, Old Testament language. And then Jesus came, and God's presence was here with us, right, through Jesus. For 30 or so years, God's presence fully revealed in Jesus, especially in his last three years of his life. 
Jesus died for our sins, rose, seated at the right hand of the Father. Where is God's presence now? I believe in the Holy Spirit means God's presence is here now because of you and me. Because he has chosen to take up residence in you and me. That is mind-blowing to me. That is a game changer. That makes all the difference in the world. If you follow that out and you go ahead with that thought process, God's presence is in this world through me and you, through Christians, through followers of Christ. What happens if God's presence is not fully lived out by me and you? Then God's presence is not really present here now. Wow. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit means God's presence is here because we are here. Make no matter about it, God can do anything he wants. Okay? God's spirit can be uh, poured out in any way, form, or fashion. Yet he's chosen us to pour out his spirit on this world. It's a humble opportunity. And to say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, says, I believe that God wants to take up residence in me and in followers of Christ so that others might know him. When I think about the Holy Spirit, I think about the words, the words in Hebrew and in Greek. Uh, uh, you have to go to seminary sometimes to kind of think that way. I never thought I would think about Hebrew and Greek, but you go to seminary and they just kind of tattoo it on you, although I don't have any tattoos, I feel like I do. The Holy Spirit in Hebrew is ruach, R-U-A-C-H, ruach. I wish I could say it like a Hebrew, a Jew. Ruach. It means breath. It means wind. We've had the Holy Spirit presence in God's, present in God's word since the beginning of time. You remember whenever he created humanity, he breathed into them the breath of life. Ruach. I believe in the Holy Spirit states, I believe in life. And I believe that God breathes life into us. The Greek word for spirit is pneuma. P-N-E-U-M-A. Pneuma. It means the same. Wind or breath. John chapter 20. After his crucifixion and resurrection. In the way in which he presented himself back to the disciples. It says. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed pneuma. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Stating, I believe in the Holy Spirit, is to say that the Spirit brings life. God brings life. That, that life on this earth, existence on this earth, is not life without the power of the Holy Spirit living in you. Amen? John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come, Jesus said, so that you might have life and have it abundantly. That's a life filled with the Spirit. That's a life in the Spirit. To say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, says, I believe that God's Spirit brings life. Is it in you? Is God's Spirit in you? Some people have problem with the Trinity. We're proclaiming the Trinity uh, fully today. I believe in God the Father. Several weeks ago, I believe in Jesus Christ, and now I believe in the Holy Spirit. Uh, numerous people say, how, do, how does that work? How do you have God three in one? The best way I know to explain, humbly, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God's presence three in one, is uh, the idea of uh, H2O. What is H2O? Water. What is H2O? Ice. What is H2O? Steam. So water or H2O can present itself in three different ways, right? You break ice down, what do you have? H2O. You break water down, what do you have? H2O. You break steam, what do you have? H2O, the Trinity. The same component, the same makeup, presented in different ways. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To say, I believe in the Holy Spirit is to say that we believe that God's Spirit brings life. Is it in you? Is He in you? Secondly, to say, I believe in the Holy Spirit 
means that we believe that God brings power. That God brings power through bringing and filling us with the Holy Spirit. John 14 goes on to say, Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do, Jesus says. And then he says this, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask anything in my name, and I will do it, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. I believe in the Holy Spirit proclaims that I believe that the Spirit brings life. And I believe in the Holy Spirit proclaims I believe the Spirit brings power. And Jesus says that we will do greater things than he had done. That's one of those things that when you read the Bible you go, yeah, right. That we will do greater things than Jesus has done. And I believe it because I believe when the Spirit comes there is power. There is power. Power to resist temptation. Power to reconcile. Power to dispel darkness. Power to run with perseverance, Hebrews says, the race marked out for us. I believe in the Holy Spirit. It means God dwells in me. God, bring, God brings to me life and God brings to me power. So you remember the walls of Jericho came tumbling down, right? Pretty powerful. You remember that Jesus walked on water. You, you, you remember and believe that, that Jesus died for our sins. But when we say we believe in the Holy Spirit, we're saying that we believe that God's given us the power to even do greater things than that. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Life and power. How do we receive this? This is the how. This is the what difference it makes in our lives. First, we give his spirit authority. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. 2 Corinthians 3 says, And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty, there is justice, there is power. In order for us to allow this to make a huge difference in our life, we have to give the spirit authority and say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. And in order for us to experience power in the Holy Spirit, we have to give him authority and let go of our worldly desires. I believe in the Holy Spirit brings life and brings power. And we invite that in our life when we give it authority and we let go of other passions and desires. A number of years ago, I was looking for a way to communicate what it means to let go of worldly passions and desires. And I came across this story of, of monkeys in Africa. Now raise your hand if you thought coming to the sermon today you were going to hear about monkeys in Africa. <laughs> Native hunters in the jungles of Africa trap monkeys. They trap monkeys by slicing a coconut in two. The true story. They hollow it out and in one half of the shell they cut a hole just big enough for a monkey's hand to pass through. Then they place an orange in the other coconut half before fastening together the two halves of the coconut shell. Finally, they secure the coconut to a tree with a rope, retreat into the jungle, and wait. Sooner or later, an unsuspecting monkey swings by, smells the delicious orange, discovers its location inside the coconut. The monkey then sleeps, slips his hand through the small hole, grasps the orange, and tries to pull it through the hole. Of course, the orange won't come through the small hole. It's too big. To no avail, the persistent monkey continues to pull and pull, never realizing the danger that monkey's in. While the monkey struggles with the orange, the hunters simply stroll in, capture the monkey by throwing a net over him. As long as the monkey keeps his fist wrapped around the orange, the monkey's trapped. Now be careful today after church whenever people ask you, what did the preacher preach about today? Don't say he called us a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> but I know my soul resonates, my flesh resonates with that. That too often I, I state I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I even know as your pastor that it brings life 
and it brings power. But there's an orange out there that I love to eat, love to partake of, and when I smell it or I see it or I hear it, I place my hand in that hole. And even though I know that evil lurks, I will not let go of it. The Holy Spirit brings life and brings power. And in order for that Holy Spirit to make a difference in our life, brothers and sisters, we have to give it authority and let go. Let go of the things that take the place of the Spirit in our own lives. The beauty of His Spirit is, is He will not force it upon us. You remember at the crucifixion of Jesus, there were two thieves to each side. One chose to acknowledge Him and he led him. One chose to berate him and dishonor him, and he led him. And he'll let us keep our hand in that coconut shell wrapped around our sinful desire, but he's also there to welcome us home when we let go. There's a song that we sing in our hymnal. It's number 354. I want you to turn to 354 in your hymnal. <coughs> and it's football season, and I asked Dr. Gay, our music minister, if I could call an audible this morning. She said it was okay. So what's printed in your bulletin, we're going to save for another day, and we're going to sing this hymn, I Surrender All. And as you sing this hymn, uh, as we sing this hymn together, I hope that you'll think about what it means to let go and to let God. I hope you'll think about what it means for you to let go of those things in your life that take the place of the Spirit. And you allow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to live in you. I believe in the Holy Spirit. It says, I believe God wants to live in me. I believe that that will bring life. And I believe that that will bring power. Maybe you need to let go of some things this morning. As we sing this hymn, I invite anyone who's been coming and visiting the life of this church, if you'd like to become a member like my daughter did this morning, I invite you down. If you've never let go, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit to the point of saying, I want to follow Jesus, I invite you down to stand with me. And my promise to you is this, is you will not be alone. The Holy Spirit will guide you and we will guide you as this church. As those who are broken, as those who need to let go of some things, but as those who love you. Let's stand together and sing all verses of I Surrender All. Thank you. 